Oh, hi there. How do you like my new look? <laughs> it's the Process Pod with Sal Good Sam. That's me. Uh, my name is Max Douglas. Sal Good Sam's my pen name. It's my name backwards. Long story. Another time. Or if you can go back and look at older videos, you could probably find it. I'm just sort of catching up with myself. We just had FBDM here in Montreal. Festival of BD Montreal. Montreal Comic Art Festival. MCAF. It was three days of eight hours a day live streaming. And then I had to go do teach my classes on Wednesday. And we did an interview, me and Sam, for the sequential podcast on uh, Thursday. Yeah. I got another one coming up, too, this weekend. Those are going well. Stay tuned. Um, go check the channel on my channel. The channel you're watching this on, on the suggested channels, you'll find the sequential channel. Subscribe. Check it out. I'll catch it when I start putting them live. We're going to do a bunch of them, get them in the, the can. We're a few in now, and they've gone well. And uh, when I have, I think, four or five of them, we'll start scheduling them. Uh, and that's with me, Sal Good Sam, and Sam Noir. Or otherwise known as Sam and Max. Hey, do you want to hear something fun? We, we have a, a theme song. Do you want to hear the theme song? It's my wife who's currently not feeling great because of this heat and other things. Um, but sang, sings real nice. And uh, I believe it's here. Sorry, just give me a second. I didn't prepare for this. There we are. Ready, ready to be rocked. Any moment now. It's the Sequential Podcast. With Sam and Max talking to Canadian comic book people. <laughs> it's the sequential podcast with Sam and Max talking to Canadian comic book people. It's good, hey? Yeah. It's fun and it makes people bop at the beginning of interviews. I've figured out how to get it to play when we're using OBS to record things, how to get it to play through so everyone can hear it, as opposed to what I just did now, so it was on the, on the mic. I'll figure it out later. Um, but for now, I'll be editing it into the... I'll probably do that anyway. I'll probably edit it into the final recording that I upload to YouTube, so it just sounds slick. I like the little giggle in the middle. It's good. Ange, Ange is a, a, a very talented singer. Um, and... Uh, Yeah, so those have gone good. Here in the Process Podcast, I usually talk about my work, and I've been working a bit on a new short wordless horror comic, sci-fi comic, horror comic. I'm not sure if you'd call it which. There's some pencils for the next bunch underway. You can catch the stuff on Instagram as I'm going usually. The page before, these are technically pencils, but you see I've, I've used ink to clean them up. Having fun with this. This is all the first page is all finished. It's all inked. There we go. I don't think I've autofocus on, but that's legible enough, I think. And uh, that's gonna go into my news, which was gonna publish this past weekend at FBDM, but then back in February I went like, hmm. I don't wanna try to process all the stuff that's been going on and crunch for a deadline. I was really close. Let me show you. Here is everything for Mind Engine, Volume 1, Ignition Sequence is the subtitle I'm using for it. I'm not numbering them, but it's the first in the Mind Engine series, and I'm calling it Ignition Sequence. You can get a hint from that as about what the next one might be called. This is my work in process folder. It's everything going into the book so far. There's going to be some educational stuff, some personal stories, some strips, some illustrations of uh, live art of musicians, uh, memoir stories, Bastard's Tale, The Box is a weird fantasy thing, Dream Life Book 2, it's coming, and all these thumbnails, that's the big chunk there, that's going to be all Dream Life, like 40-something pages, and New Armageddon Blues, a sci-fi thing, and the new wordless thing at the end there, too. It's I'm excited to get that finished, but rather than rush when it's all the drama going on and kind of the relative stress and turmoil of the times i didn't want to i didn't feel that was smart to try push myself so i postponed publishing and i'm actually doing more crazily enough doing more work 
Uh, it's going to be a bigger book when I'm done. But that's a good thing. I think it was a better way to process it. In fact, the new comic I'm doing, this thing is directly inspired by the current events. Um, you know, this is like a plague story. So, hence the not too subtle character designs there. Right? So, the. Uh, That goes afoot, but it's been slow. I was right to know that I would be. I mean, partially I gave myself permission to to pause, but it also was very hard to focus and work on this stuff. Watching other YouTubers, like I follow Finding Simon, and he was talking about this, where it's been difficult to focus on uh, creative pursuits when so much intense stuff's going on. It's not that this stuff isn't good for creativity; it could be, but. Uh, you're wrestling with um, trying to be useful and productive, but also having that focus and calm. You can get to a flow state in order to work. Stress doesn't do that for most of us. That's a bit of a myth. Um, so certain kinds of stress, you know, deadlines aren't necessarily bad when there isn't other huge, crazy things going on. They, they push you a little bit and they give you a little stress, but it's often, at least for me, constructive stress. But it's the, the other stuff. <laughs> That complicates things and why I decided to take a pause and but I've been getting into it again with the new story and I've been looking a lot at the other stuff and uh, catch up on commissions these are private commissions for this one's for a, a client who donated to Dracula Son of the Dragon which you can buy by the way over in Comixology the print version is hung up a little bit but they're having some problems because of the COVID but you can get the digital if you're a member of the subscription service for so Amazon Prime, Kindle is universal or something like that, Kindle's subscription service, or the Comixology subscription service, then technically you already own Dracula and the Dragon. You just gotta download it. It's part of your 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 membership deal. It comes free. So this is another these are just thumbnails, very primitive at this stage, but just thinking out uh, commission for another client from the Dracula uh, thing. I have a couple of commissions I gotta get done for Patreon backers as well. Some cats, uh, a tarot card for a friend. I'm kind of backlogged, so gotta get into that, get the gears rolling, and try to get Mind Engine pick up the pace a little bit, but. I also need to try to get more um, more students. So I'm still teaching. In fact, SinStudio.ca is the school in downtown Montreal that I teach at, but we're online now because everyone is online now. So for my next semester of making comics at Sin Studio, we're all online. You can sign up from anywhere in the world with a good internet connection, and you're going to have to keep up with my quick patter English. Uh, apologies, I don't speak very good French, so I don't teach in French. Um, but it's all all English. Uh, you need a, a good webcam, a good solid internet connection, and the ability to scan your art would be good, or if you're working digitally, just be able to send it and post it to the blog. We have a class blog and share the work that way, and I be able to give feedback via Zoom, pre-recorded little things. I can look at the work and screen share and give feedback. It's working really well. Um, but I'm only teaching that one class. It's Sin Studio. I usually teach two, and because we're concerned about sign up pay, uh, rates and stuff they're only booking me for one class next semester so I will have a, a, a reduction in my income um, so it's a good time to mention uh, hey I have patreon.com slash sell good I have an account there and you can become a student patron for $10 a month and that means that I look at your art and we talk about what you want to accomplish and where you want to go and how you want to grow and then I start giving you critiques and lesson plans and instructions on what to study. And then each month you're supposed to come back to me. We're about an hour. We can use Zoom or some other video chat software and check out your work, give you feedback on it, and send you off with more assignments. So it's going to be based on courses that I've taught in the past. Uh, what I've been doing is spending a little time here and there um, breaking out my past lesson plans into modules that I can teach and I'll sort of pull off the shelf. I'm always sort of customized to the student. You got to teach the students you have, not some idealized version of a course plan. But it's, I need that structure to kind of organize myself and and uh, have ideas about how to approach the lessons. Um, so yeah, 
that would be cool if you find yourself on furlough you got some pay and some time in your hands you want to learn how to make comics or draw more dynamically or do cartooning or try to take a shot at caricature or get your anatomy a little better or composition or learn gesture speed drawing to moving subjects and stuff like that uh virtual plein air um basic drawing exercises I could probably teach younger students if they're committed um, and into it, then not sure. It depends on the subject matter, but consider it's one-on-one. -on -one. I think all ages, as long as they're, they're actually really into doing the work and, and can focus, um, then I'm open to children uh, taking lessons with me on Hydron. It, it wouldn't be like through group situations, so I don't have to worry about that like I do at Sin Studio. I usually have an age limit of 15 at least for Sin Studio because it's just more practical. But uh, I think that's a bit more flexible when we're, I'm doing stuff one-on-one -on, -one on Zoom. And so you could do the $10 a month Patre uh, Patreon thing, or you could even just book me at my hourly rate. And student patrons on Patreon, if they want to get more time with me, can do that as well. I give them a little bit of a discount on my hourly. Uh, but otherwise, yeah. Um, and I, c I would really like to grow that. So, of course, like a $2 pledge on Patreon, you get to read all my comics, all my indie stuff anyway. And... That helps too. I would like to have like three or four hundred two dollar patrons, and then I, I'm actually that's my, my that's my rent. <laughs> Wouldn't take too much, and I would love to have that. That's part of the reason why when I first started, I imagined it as a subscription service, as a way for you people to sign up to read my comics. It's still not gotten to the point where it buys me the time to do nothing but make those comics, and thus make that a more meaningful description because my my output is a little slower uh considering i'm always having to do other things and that'll probably continue to be true as long as i do have to partially teach to support things but if i were just teaching and doing my comics on patreon and didn't have to do anything else i would definitely be able to produce a lot more uh, i i found over the last what was it six months i had a three month period where i took time off i didn't teach any classes in the winter of 2019 and just took time for myself to work my own, own stuff and then uh teaching two classes in the the late winter spring of 2020 it's been intense well once the covid thing started it was really intense but i've been able to uh support myself pretty well and get a fair bit done until the uh, shutdown start uh started so it gave me all to say it gave me confidence to say that were my financial situation more stable and i didn't have to do as many other things juggle uh as many gigs i would definitely be able to be way more productive with comics um so that is the dream for patreon to grow have a i don't know 10 20 student patrons and like 300 regular subscribers um and then also have a mid-tier five dollar a month option to get uh, a couple times a year i'll do like a, a digital portrait uh, and it could be a caricature or an actual nice portrait or a fan arty thing you in cosplay costume or for somebody else because you're gonna get more than one you can get it uh, at least once or twice a year depending on how complex they are so you could always if you're happy with one you got you could commission one for your your your, your special somebody or your or your kid or or a cousin or a, a grandma i don't know get creative um they're not physical like it'll just be a file but uh i look forward to doing those I like doing portraits i gave myself i felt like i needed to work on that about 10 years ago so when i published dream life um this is my i've got it right here 2014 graphic novel self-published a little help from the canada council of the arts to get the work done and then i had a couple of crowdfunders to get this physical book finished it came out nicely that illustration by the way led to me getting a job illustrating the box well not the outside a secret compartment illustration for lone wolf and cub i'll let they let your imagination to figure out how that worked out good actually by the way uh there's my comic and uh when i was done this i was feeling like likenesses was something i had to work on so i left this when you when you get the book from me at, at an event I draw your portrait there. It could be like a caricature or silly or just you. Usually I get someone to kind of look up and do like a noble profile. And the, and the point was to learn how to do them fast but also get a good likeness. Uh, so I'm down to about 10 to 15 minutes depending on where I am that day. Uh, and 
about 500 of them now, which I still, you know, everyone has some stinkers, but I feel like it, it really helped me refine my ability to draw likenesses and capture things quickly and be more gestural uh, and less constructive and stiff. Um, and that is one of the things that I would teach you, or at least what I can in the context of a course, you still got to do the practice. Uh, I definitely teach a very pragmatic style of class. I teach the students I have, not the lesson plan uh, verbatim. Like I follow a lesson plan, but I I'll have to adapt to the students I have. So one-on-one, -on -one, it's going to be very much based on you show me your work. We talk about what you want to accomplish, your goals, your hopes, your aspirations. And then I start assigning your work and giving you feedback each month. And you can do that through the Patreon uh, uh, campaign, the student patron class, $10 a month. Uh, or you can just contact me and, and do it a la carte, pay, pay by the hour. Um, students, patrons get a, a, a flat, uh, fixed hour a month of one-on-one -on -one time checking out their work and following up, but they can also pay for more uh, a la carte and I give them a reduced rate. Plus they get access to all my comics. In a perfect world, I'd have like 10 or 20 of those and maybe 300 subscribers uh, reading my comics and that would that would cover the bills. Yeah. So go check out patreon.com slash salgood and pledge. And I'm going to work on some videos, probably working on those commissions I just showed you a little bit, and more comic art. Maybe live streaming, maybe pre-recording. Live streaming's been interesting, but uh, I can't really follow the chat and the video qualities. I feel like these pre-recorded ones are sharper, so I might do more of them. Uh, and I guess I'll see you around the internet, folks. Uh, check out in the channel, in this channel, look for the suggested channels and you'll find a sequential channel and you want to sign up to that to catch the sequential podcast interviews with sam and max i'm max and then sam noir and we will be interviewing canadian comic peoples go do it go check it out and uh keep washing your hands and i will see you around the internets <laughs>